Well, it's been, quite frankly, a disastrous year for those of us who treasure our freedoms, our individual freedoms. We hear so much about the troops, the fact that they're defending our freedoms, but you have to wonder what freedoms are they protecting. The Patriot Act that is, was supported by both Democrats and Republicans have taken away so many basic freedoms, allowed the involvement of the federal government in so many of your affairs. And I've never minded uh, investigations that take place as long as there was some check and balance. Balance. That's the uh, magic. That's the special nuance of our system. We have a, a system of checks and balances where you have three equal branches of government. Before the executive, the FBI, the police department go in and, and interfere in your privacy, uh, look through your mail, break into your house, check your library records. I thought, and most uh, of those who uh, pr want to protect our liberty felt like you'd have to go to a judge and get a search warrant, convince a judge that your request was reasonable and there was a reason as to where you were going to go with the whole investigation. Well, not anymore. Not with this pat or the Unpatriot Act, we should call it. Not with the Patriot Act. And of course, there was more gasoline poured on the fire here at, in December. At the end of the year, without telling hardly a soul, President Obama signs this National Defense Authorization Act that is a huge assault on the Fifth Amendment. This act allows uh, the presidents to go ahead and issue an order to seize an American citizen. Your lawyer can't see you. You can be indefinitely detained. You're not charged with anything. You can be indefinitely detained for years and years and years. And uh, not a thing you can do about it. And so uh, the freedoms we have continue to be chipped away at. And it appalls me. And like I say, you almost wonder if elections matter anymore. Does it matter who you elect? Uh, Bush was horrible on the Patriot Act and on protecting our individual freedoms. And Obama has been much worse. So you're kind of damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. Now, the only good news, if there is some good news, is that the Supreme Court, and I've not always agreed with the Supreme Court, but the U.S. Supreme Court just this week issued a ruling involving the tracking of individual citizens. We had a court of appeals. Uh, and several federal district courts had said that it was nothing illegal for police officers to go ahead and put a GPS monitoring system on your car, sneak up, put it on your car, trace anywhere you go. They'd be able to search and, and, and see wherever your car happens to go. And here's what uh, the federal court that looked at this case said. This is the federal court up in, in the Washington, D.C. area. They said, we have no expectations of privacy when we are in public places and that tracking technology merely makes public surveillance easier and more effective. You're wide open to be looked at, to monitored, to be tracked wherever you go without any justification whatsoever, none whatsoever. Uh, thankfully, the U.S. Supreme Court in the decision that came down this week said that no reasonable person and this is uh, an argument that was made by other uh, Court of Appeals judges, the Supreme Court agreed with it, that no reasonable person expects that his public movements will be tracked 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and therefore we do have an ex expectation of privacy in the whole of our public movements. And uh, I'm very pleased that the U.S. Supreme Court unanimously threw out these lower court decisions. If you think there's a reason to track that person, if you think they're running drugs or whatever the, the case happens to be, you merely go to a court and get authorization. We had Judge Napolitano, who's going to be on our show here in, in the next month or so, uh, who's a very outspoken judge on Fox News, said, look, He's been called at 3 o'clock in the morning in his pajamas. And, and when the case was made by the police officer, he said, sure, go ahead. I'm authorizing the search. I'm authorizing the break-in. I'm authorizing what you're doing in the morning. Have me an order. I'll sign the order, but it's effective now. But at least there was some checks and balances. And we've seen the degradation of those checks and balances so much here in the last few years by both Democrats and Republicans. Like I say, I have some deep concerns about what matter. What does it matter who wins the elections if they're going to carry on like this? Again, I've been quite uh, negative on the U.S. Supreme Court and some of their future rulings. But in this case, they got it right. And I'm very glad today to see that you can't take a GPS and put it on your car without getting a warrant giving us some basic protections that we always thought we had. You know, there's an interesting quote I found. Uh, this is by one of the founders of our country. 
uh, talking to an Englishman, an English lord, and said, My lord, I can touch a bell in my right hand and order the arrest of a citizen in Ohio. I can touch a bell again and order the imprisonment of a citizen in New York, and no power on earth can release them. Can the Queen of England do so much? Well, the Queen of England can't. Uh, up until the Supreme Court decision, uh, apparently some officials, both Democrats and Republicans, thought you could. Supreme Court stood up for our basic liberties to some degree, but we still have a long, long, long way to go. I'll be right back after this message.